This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter and here we are in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and this is where we talk with people in and around independent pro wrestlers, and maybe just a bunch of them in the chat room, too, especially tonight. Uh, so uh, go check out everything, of course, at IndieWrestling.us, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out some of the action and all the other podcasts and past interviews that we've had uh, for a good long while. We've been doing all these wrestling shows. That's so true. with us tonight, back again. The, <laughs> That's a bottle of rum, too. On that. <laughs> He's having fun in the chat room already. <laughs> Marshall Gambino, the bull. Marshall Gambino has joined us. What's going on? Wait, what's going on? What's going We're on? We're just reading some chats. There yeah. was there was a certain there was a certain one in there by a a certain female that uh, that's a shoot. <laughs> John uh, Roden, please talk about Fleck. Please, no, I don't. I don't no. have to go take a <laughs> shit. But anyways, <laughs> Marshall. So we we had you on. I think we we tracked down about a year ago. Yeah. The high stakes title for IWC was just being introduced. Yep. And uh, you were carrying that for a good long while. Yeah. How many months did I carry? Was that six months? I think six months. Yeah. And Mr. Flexor decided mm-hmm. it was his turn. Mm-hmm. You know. And uh, since you've hit retirement, I've done shit. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. That first month, I didn't do anything. Oh, let's roll back a little bit. I, first of all, we, uh, as people were uh, listening to this, they'll probably maybe listen to our uh, Bronco McBride episode, and we were talking about some of the interesting incidents that you've been in. I think you had been into a couple of these last time you were on. But uh, you, you, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance crowd, of course, is always you know something I ask about a lot of times here on the show. And you, of course, have a very special relationship with them, including having the cops called on you uh, a, a, a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's weird. That was a, I guess that was the first time ever. Um, I, the details are a little sketchy on that. All I remember is I was sitting in the back and uh, somebody said the cops are coming. And next thing I know, the cop comes through, he's looking, asking for my ID. And uh, somebody had he had to go see you and mm-hmm. review some video. Yep. And that was about it. But that was kind of. We got yelled at for that. Yeah. We missed Rev is in he, he's out there calling, Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. And we're standing there and there's 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 a cop in front of us. I was like, uh uh-uh, I know this drill. I don't run when there's a cop standing in front of me. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he and he hits the curtain, Where are you guys? Cop talking to Marshall. Okay. <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> And then we went out and we, we walked and Marshall just stayed and we went out and did a beat down and it we was came just, back. Cop talking to Marshall, I don't know what happened. It was just really weird. I, I, I don't know. I, uh, I think I, don't, I think what I enjoyed it more if it was for an actual reason. Like mm. there, there was no reason for them to be there. There was, from my understanding, it was that a fan that I didn't even have an interaction with was scared that I was going to do something. He called nine one one. I, yeah, I, and that was that was a mild night. Mm-hmm. You know, that wasn't even the you know. The right thing. I, I think what really, I, what, what I remember from that night is uh, we did the spot out in the ring. We were going to the back, and there was uh, one of uh, the, the yellow barricades separating me. Which is only at the entrance, by the yes. way, at these shows. One section, seven foot section. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was on one side of it. There was a guy on the other side. He's jaw jacking with me. There was another late, there was an old lady that came up, and she started. She started rambling about something, and her her teeth started coming out. Her dentures started coming out of her mouth, <laughs> and I might have proceeded oh, to look. tell her to take her teeth out. And wait, but legit, their teeth were. Fine. I swear to God, yeah, like they were coming out. It's like this she is, was. She this was, is not like this. This 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 is an ugly, smelly crowd promo. This is no. This was actually happening. Yeah, she was. She was. She was basically telling me that I was a son of a bitch, but then the teeth started to fall out. You could. It started like getting mum, mumbled because you couldn't understand because the teeth were coming out. And she's trying to keep them in, but like the saliva's there, and it's and, and I 
was pretty pissed and I might have told her to finish taking her teeth out and do something with her her mouth that you know without her teeth and that, that was about it and then the funny part is the guy that called the cops was like 50 feet away from me yeah, yeah. so I, and yeah. I went to the back and I thought it was funny and next thing I know doop, 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 because I, I saw somebody like walk away from the situation pull out their flip phone <laughs> and we're just we're just intensely on it and the next thing I know I see I see a and I remember because Derek comes to the back and he He's asking me what I if I did anything. I, was, I didn't touch anybody. And he goes, I don't understand. What did you do? Which I said, if telling an old lady to blow me is like a felony, well, then I'm guilty. But that's about it. Like This was after the riot thing, too. Yeah. This was nothing. It was well after. Well after. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'll be honest with you. To get back to that part of it is when that brawl happened where uh, Hentai and Bronco had to come over. Um, you know, the guy threatened us. He threatened to stab me which was kind of intense at that point, but which really kind of compounded on it is two days later, and I still have the message. I got a Facebook message from that guy telling me the next time I come to the show, he was going to stab me and all this shit. And, uh, Slicey and dicey. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. And that's why I took, I took a couple months away. Mm-hmm. I, I called Derek up, you know, and some people might not like to, you know, blur the lines, but... I told Derek, I said, this, we got to cool, cool it down for a little bit. I said, I have, you know, I have a real life and stuff. I can't have stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, so. But, and then come, the first night we come back, the cops get called. <laughs> 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 they were waiting for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then by the end, but the funny thing is, by the end of all of it, it that was Coffee's fan really favorite. Cool. But we yeah. got off that, but I'm saying, like, with the end of my RWA run, every, the fans were... You know, I guess they love me. I guess I don't know. Yeah, you came back around. It, 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 it was kind of amazing because they loved you as much as they hated you. It seemed. Yeah. When it came back around, because I think you you showed up. You had a, a high stakes championship. Yep. Like maybe you beat up some of the alliance members or something, right? And it was like, you, yeah, you came in and saved on, on somebody. I think. Yeah, it was. Well, it was the whole Thomas Mathis thing, and you know, and uh, it, you know, at that time I knew like what my exit date was from wrestling, so it was like. Let's just do this and let's do something that hasn't been done. Let's bring the high stakes title over here. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and it worked out. It was it was fun. It was a fun match. Awesome. Uh, so from there, you did have your uh, again. You had another run doing um, a lot of things that uh, probably put me at danger at ringside at IWC, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. namely a, a, a tables a tables elimination match. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was a little scary for me too. It was, just, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'd I, imagine, I, and I, David Wallace. <laughs> I, I love David. <laughs> <laughs> there is something interesting. We, we were doing a recording for something else for the network, and um, um, Pollock and and Lawless were talking about how they've been in more more table spots in the last like year or so of IWC than in their ten- entire careers. Yeah, I mean, the funny the funny thing is for me is. Uh, I I kind of enjoy doing that mm-hmm. more than and I'm honestly I, I it got to the point where I enjoyed doing that more than tagging. Mm-hmm. I, I you know a lot of people that know some don't that like you know my hips not the best so you as a wrestler you find different ways to get things done without aggravating injuries and stuff. So mm-hmm. I just I did it a couple times, and I was like, okay, well, this doesn't hurt as bad. So that's kind of where it went from there. And, you know, I felt, man, when I, I – it was funny. I just watched I just watched that spot with Lawless a couple days ago, and I, I was like oh, – it, it just sounded like a gun going off. And I just – I cringed. I was sitting in my, in my office, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, I felt so bad for him. But then then you watch it, and you keep going, and then there's the, the table spot with me and Flexor, and uh, – the two tables and when I went through them, like I legit smacked my face off the floor. Like I, I just remember Craig's like, he's talking and I looked at him and I seen his lips, like they're moving, but like I couldn't hear what was going on. I wasn't processing for a couple of minutes, but I can only imagine what Sean Phoenix feels like. 
I was just thinking it's more or less the same thing because uh, yeah. so just to roll back for people that maybe aren't familiar, uh, the the uh, Wallace uh, uh, chair spot we're talking about, you waffled him in the back, but apparently it caught the back of his head, right? Yeah, the the upper part of the chair, the uh, and I didn't like I said I didn't plan for it that way, but it caught him like in mm-hmm. that that fat round part of the back of your head and busted him just right open right yeah. away, and. Uh, yeah, that wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the finish. I think you had two tables stacked on the outside. Yeah, one was uh, between the apron and the barricade, and then there was one on top of that. And yeah. what happened was, is uh, the tables were a little weak, and uh, <laughs> they didn't absorb that weight like we thought they were. And when, when I came down, it was coming kind of awkward. And yeah, I went straight down and just side of my face. Just you watch it like if you watch it on a video, it just bounces. Um, there was a point where I was kind of slow mo trying to figure out like what happened, you know, yeah. because I watched it in person. I was I was right there on camera, and it was, um, you know, it was like I'll tell you that hurt a hell of a lot more than when I took um, when I speared uh, Corey off the off the bleachers through the table. Yeah, that that you think that was the most you were knocked loopy? Or- yeah, well, loopy, yes, but not physical. But the most physical pain is that. That one legend so I jumped over and they didn't catch me too right and they I went over the top rope and they like power bombed me right into the metal part of the, the ring apron. Like oh. the ring yeah, it was that was yeah, that's why I lost I had lost feeling in my lower body for like about thirty, forty seconds. Oof. Yeah. So Oof. Yeah. I mean, but here's the thing, like over the years though, like I've uh, it's, it's not something to joke about, but like I've been hitting the head many times with a chair, like, and I get the whole I call it reboot. Like mm-hmm. everything fades out the black and then it comes back. Mm-hmm. Like, that's happened before, but that was holy shit. Yeah, I just remember saying to CJ, I was like, "Is my nose bleeding?" He's like, "Nah." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> 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 Fuck everything else. Don't Wait, go. this is the legend spot? No, no, this was this was the uh, the table, the, table, the tables yeah. to the floor. Yeah. yeah, the legend spot. I I, I legit couldn't get up. Like mm-hmm. I was. I was telling I was telling Craig, I was like, Can somebody fucking help me, I can't get up, you know. <laughs> and they wanted like they wanted to go to the hospital. I was like, nah. But I remember driving home that night. That was a whole from Meadville. Dude, like when you like, Yeah, it's what, three hours? Yeah. Like oh, it's just yeah. It, it's like sitting on a toilet outside for three hours. It hurts like hell. <laughs> so you were closing out your uh, IWC um uh, uh career there with uh, a a Cage match, which I had the fortune to be inside the cage with you. That was the first time for you. That was the first time. Broke your cage, Cherry. Yes, yes. Because about a week week or so before, I was uh, doing something with Chess Flex, or I think we were driving in our show, and he's like, What do you think about being in the cage? And I was like, Well, (laughs) oddly, with you two, I trust more than anybody else. What's funny is, so my wife taped the whole match, like on her phone, Mm -hmm. and before you had processed all the stuff. So I watched it that night and I even sent the flex and I was, I was like, this is like, honestly, this is like shit. Like I wasn't happy with it. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he was either. But then when you brought out your video in the commentary and everything, like the finished product, I was like, it's a whole different match. I was like, it looks a hundred times better than what the original video that she shot was. And I was just like, I told him, I said, you know, thank God. I I said, thank God for guys that know what the fuck they're doing with the taping. And even like Dombrowski and I'm on commentary. I said, it just, it's a whole different presentation. Mm -hmm. And it makes us look 10 times better than what we really are, honestly. Yeah, make or break. Yeah. And, and, you know, if anybody said, uh, and I, I really feel this way. Anybody goes out there and said they wrestle and they'll be like, oh, that was, that was the greatest in the world. Watch it back without the production and then watch it with the production. You'll be like, you just get blown away. It's like, I don't know. Cause I'll be honest with you. Like nerves were going in that nerves were so like, my stomach was upset. I was just, I, I know he was nervous. And then all, there was a lot of backstage bullshit going on with that match. We just amplified everything. And I remember like when they're doing announcements for us to come out, I'm like, I, I sit in the band like, this is going to be shit. Like, I just, you just get that feeling. And then watching it, well, except when you, I was like, oh, well, I feel a lot better now. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> because really, I mean, 
everybody's pretty smart. We go in there, there was really no game plan. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> you know, it, and then the funny part is we're in the back and we're like, I, I remember Flex were saying, well, what if I throw a chair and like you move and it accidentally hits Sorg or something? I'm like, I was like, well, if he didn't have that camera in his hand, I was like, we could consider that. I was like, but let's not break any equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, Sorg's already went down the road once. <laughs> Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Still trust so. them too. You hear that? Still trust them mm-hmm. too. But yeah. no, it was good. Yeah, I, I mean, it was fun. Yeah, I was a little concerned when the the table was caught on fire, but yes, <laughs> yes. Uh I I mean, I honestly, I didn't like. Like, I remember we we kind of talked about that, and, mm-hmm. and uh like, like Palmer didn't know, you know, of course, you know, and uh I just. I was like, this is either going to go over really well. I was like, or this is going to be a total disaster. And I, I, the funny part is I hit, Craig's selling, and I'm laying there. And I just, I hear out of the corner of my ear, like, uh, uh, like you're on fire. You're on fire. And I'm like, well, I'm not on fucking fire. Like, I'm like, and then after watching it, you see Flexor's leg catch on fire. And he's like, <laughs> I'm like, and then he, like, he rolls over, he pins me. And Craig's still selling. I'm, I'm like, Craig, fucking God. <laughs> And like you're laying there, and all you smell is lighter fluid. Yeah. You're just like, okay, well, I'm not like I'm not getting hot, so okay, everything's cool. But <laughs> there was a little secret, like I don't know if you knew this. So we had went to the ring. We had thirty thousand thumbtacks in a bag. Yeah. We never pulled them out, oh. but we had them. We. It was funny. And I don't care about it. At this point, kayfabe's dead. Me, Flexor, and Mickey sat in the back of the locker room 20 minutes before the match and unboxed 30,000 thumbtacks and put them in a bag. And we just decided not to. We get out there and we just didn't decide to use them. <laughs> Can I have this? He sold them. I think, oh, they, I think they ended up in, because I was at a premiere show and they're, they're, I was like, wow, there's a lot of tags here. Tags here. And, and they're separate. They, they were all one color, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and maybe. then one was in the chair that I went to sit down on, and Corey laughed at me. <laughs> uh, so, in a cage took tax in like a month. So that's my nice. Yeah. Will yeah. you go back in a cage though and film? I think that's great. No, no, absolutely. I think I think that changed that that changed <coughs> the presentation. And even like we there was a match a couple weeks later. Yeah. Uh, with uh, Chris Taylor and the Rev, and we I actually considered it. We had like so, but there was the, their cage. They didn't have enough room. Well, see, the idea that we had originally was, is I remember a couple years back when you used the GoPros from the top of the cage. Yeah. That's what, like, me and Flex were throwing it around. So like, good well, shots of, like, Chris LaRusso and Andrew Palace, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, like, because me and Flex were talking, and he had said that you told him that, like, the batteries, like, there was no guarantee with, like, how yeah. much you were going to get. Yeah. And I was like, ugh. And he's like, well, why don't I just ask Sorg to get and see if we'll go in the cage? And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> whatever you want to do. And it worked out because it's, it's great. Mm-hmm. I think it's... Like it's better than any other like cage matches before when you had to film from the outside, right? You know, just, right, and it makes up for those couple of cage matches I screwed up. Yeah. When, <laughs> well, listen, and this is not on you, but it'll never, it'll never make up for that the one at the Art Institute did years ago. You, you know about that? Yeah, one? yeah. I was, and I was not on that one. We still can't find the video. You can't find the video because it was it was the audio was messed up in it. Right. I never had a copy. I have night one. And then I have some matches from hey, the night two, but I don't. That match doesn't. I should have it somewhere. It's like missing in action. That's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I have a DVD somewhere, I think. But it was so painful. Like, yeah. After we get back, they're like, oh. So, fuck? so this is let's tell this part because Bronco on the last uh, interview we were talking about the outdoor outdoor show at West Virginia and everything, right? And I remember there was the main event. It was a big deal. You were you know almost never in the main event, let alone a cage match like this. And I th- remember. Going into it, you told me it was like, yeah, the last one got fucked up because it was, you know, basically they had a, this big show. It was uh, Norm Connors' hundredth show, and the second night instead of uh, Tony F was doing video at the time, and I think I helped with the first night. Mm-hmm. And the second night they had these kids from the Art Institute come in, and um, I'm already shaking my head because I am an Art Institute grad, so I kind of know what to expect. Uh, <laughs> so, and I've had Art Institute interns uh, in in my day job. Uh, and I know what to expect um, it, it, from the video department. And uh, what? Yeah, you said it came out. The audio was bad, and that was your. That was a big cage match you had. What was it? It was the Gambinos and Baby Babyface Fire, was it? Gory and uh, DJZ. 
Yeah, yeah. Like big match. Yeah. We dropped the titles to them. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, big night, like I don't know, Sandman and, and AJ Styles and God knows who else was there over the weekend. So this one's the one that we're outside. Last minute, they changed it to outside. We get to the last match, and you know, there's that that extra intermission because you got to put up the cage. Um, by that time, the sun is on my monitors, oh, and I awesome. don't realize that the audio isn't working. So we have the match. Yeah. And you get the commentary, but the commentary is off of other microphones bouncing off the building behind us. Yes, yeah, so it sounds really. F- it's I real remember, yeah, weird. Yeah. It's real weird. So, so going into this, I was really conscious of. Oh, I don't want to fuck this up again for Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? It was ten times better than the Art Institute. When at least it was watchable, when you could like kind of hear See what's what going on. Yeah, there was nothing with the uh, the main one. Mm-hmm. What was that? Hold on a second. I gotta see something. Oh no, something's going on. Is it something in the chat. <laughs> Said your wife's just saying it. Who is? Who oh is yeah, your wife's being put over really good in the chat who room. Is Chris um, Daniel Megan uh, thinks you're BS. Though. I'm BS. Damn, more BS. <laughs> That was so hot. The sun was shining in a cage. I remember that. You and your best friend, Brian McDowell. You had had Flexer with you guys, I think. Ginger was there too, yeah. Yeah, no, I had the cage match was fun. It was fun, it was so hot. It was, yeah, it was hot. The sun was at its, because that was a one o'clock show. We started at one, so the sun was right there. I remember one part, you bumped me or something, or we took a, maybe it was a double down or something. Like, I remember laying there, and I just hear you say, Fuck! It's so hot out here. I'm like, I know. I think we, yeah, I think we did like this super flex or whatever. And then I was laying there and I was like, it's black man. I was like, it's so hot. Oh, dude, it was, it was, it was like on fire. You got to climb the cage and it's just on fire. I'm like, Ugh. oh, geez. it was fun though. Mm-hmm. It was, it was when, especially when you think you're gonna wrestle in a cage match inside the building. <laughs> you never know in indie wrestling. Well, you're moving on to um, a new venture. With uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling. Yes. I've been hearing about this being in the works for a good while now. Yeah. Well, how long have I been talking about this? Like the last year? Over a year. Oh, a year. I think I heard about it. Yeah. I think I'm like... About yeah. a year and a half. Maybe two years ago he had the idea. Was when I first heard. And then it's been building since... I had an idea. And the biggest delay with it was is I kind of one day decided it's like, you know, when I'm, I'm wrestling and it's all like... I'm taking all this time away from the family to begin with. Yeah. Like, okay, if I start my own, yeah. now it's even more time. Because um, in that last year between IWC and RWA, like you were wrestling like more than I probably a, wrestled more while. Than, yeah, I probably wrestled more in that last year than I probably did in five or six years before that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's – and it all worked out. It was, you know um, – n- no secret, you know, IWC was looking to – for younger guys, mm-hmm. uh, they were kind of weeding out the old guys. Um, you know, one day I just I, I called Phil Bad up, and we were just having a conversation, and I and I was very blunt with him, and I said, you know, I'd like to come down and work for you. I know we had talked about he, me and him had talked about that years before when he first started RWA, and it just mm-hmm. never worked out. Mm-hmm. And um, I said, I don't know if I fit in. Um, you know, I said I probably have a year or two left that I could still, you know, give back, do something. And then it just kind of snowballed with hentai coming on board and then Bronco and Roden. And um, in the end, I think it worked out great. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. It kind of, it, it really did turn into kind of an unofficial IWC inv- invasion. Yes. And, and and I think that's why it really was so hot. Because, I yeah. mean, one thing we talked about the last interview, there were actually comments from, from like, audience members, like, how can you let those guys come in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. go back to IWC. Yeah. It was all the yeah. whole nine. And it's funny because, you know what, no matter what anybody thinks, remember, there's somebody that pays for all that. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So... And and also we're getting like um I, I've made the comment about like we're you know it's 2018 and I'm still getting like classics between Justin Idol and Gory and yeah. Tentai right like just like it, it really I, I hate to make anybody feel old but just like when I started watching wrestling here mm-hmm. in 2006. Well, it was funny, but like the one thing that was funny with all this, I I remember we wrestled uh, uh, Gory when I and like I remember reading Gory talking, I was like, Dude, we haven't wrestled in like years. Like, like, and it was just like, it was crazy because, you know, me and Mickey had all that, that chemistry with uh, DJZ and Gory and IWC. It was like, all right, 
Gore's going to do this, this, this. We just kind of, you remember, you know. And you, so, if anything, we lost a step. Like, not Gore. The Gore's so top of his game, you know, I lost a step. Mm -hmm. um, but I enjoyed it down there. It was different. Um, it was something, to me, new and fresh. Uh, not the same old, same old kind of thing. And there was a little bit more. Cops and riots. Oh, yeah, cops and riots. There was a little bit more room for creative input. Mm -hmm. um, it all worked out. And then in the meantime, all that was going on. I, I thought I was kind of out with IWC. And um, we had talked about the, the high stakes title. I had talked about doing that um, when Chuck Roberts still in the company. And we had plans to resurrect that title before I had my, right before I had my shoulder surgery. And uh, when I went in for the surgery, you know, me and Chuck decided that let's not do that right now. It's not a good time, blah, 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 blah. And when it was kind of put on the back burner, Chuck sold the company. And I had talked to Justin a couple times about it, like, you know, the legacy of it and, you know, kind of being a good title for mid card guys to um, work towards that, you know, guys that necessarily can't, shouldn't be wrestling for the super any title or the world title or you know just give something for the younger guys to chase and then it just kind of went from there uh i mean i designed the title we sent it off to be made uh got it back and the rest is thank you <laughs> but the rest is you know it's history it, it it's good i mean i i think flexor as far as i'm concerned flexor should have it for as long as he can carry it i mean he's a he's a good representative for it mm -hmm. um you know, the title is gimmicky. That's what it was for. There's always a stipulation on the mat, like for the match for that title. Um, it's something different. You know, people can steal the name and copy the title, but there's only really one high stakes title. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I, I'm glad to be a part of that. I'm glad that I could part of that. Like I had something to do with bringing that back to pay homage to guys like Shirley Doe, Boomer Payne, guys that have had that title before. Um, so I had fun with that run. I enjoyed it. It was probably outside of probably outside of the the major run that me and Mickey had with uh, Shima and Gory. That's probably my favorite run with that. I, I enjoyed that last six months immensely. I was always having fun with it. So, but so. then, like I said, it, you know, I, I knew. I knew there was time to, you know, quit wrestling month to month. Mm -hmm. um, now, that doesn't mean I'm done totally forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just I'm not doing it every month. And then uh, when I knew I was finishing up, I was like, well, I want to do something to get back to guys, like the young guys. I, I sat around and I see a lot of young guys in the last couple of years that would come out of school and get a shot here or there but never really got a chance like as far as i'm concerned you need like when you start out you need as many reps as you can get right i don't give it like i really don't care where you wrestle like you know a lot of times black diamond they used to get a real bad rep for oh that's you know that's just that's not the best well you know what that's where me and mickey honed our characters at down there mm -hmm. without them there wouldn't have been no Gambino. And a lot of people have. Yeah. And oh, it, a lot of freedom down there. Yeah. You, you get a lot of freedom. And it's, you know. it's been, um, Black and Diamond has been a constant yes. when I'm talking to people from the Pittsburgh area, it seems. It's one of the reasons that we started looking at them and started working with them as far as our stuff here. Yeah. Because I think there's a lot of good stuff there. It's a lot of stuff building, of yeah. course. And they got a really interesting presentation and, and philosophy on things down yep. there, too. So just it just hasn't gotten in front of more people than are getting yeah. down there. I mean, they're kind of in an isolated area. Absolutely. In a sense. Um, but, you know, sitting around, you know, I thought, well, what can I do? And, you know, it's no secret. Bronco and I worked with Five Star Well, it's wrestling. not now. Well, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, our philosophy that regardless of who owned the company or what was, you know, yeah. when we were in East Brady, me and Bronco were calling the shots there. And we were giving a lot of guys, you know, chances. And, like, I know... He's the same way. He feels the same way. Like one guy that I take credit for is Remy. Mm -hmm. Like Remy LeVay. Remy LeVay. Before he started working for us in East Bay for Five Star, he really didn't have a persona or a presence. And it was because nobody was giving him the chance month after month to craft his yeah. skills. So we started doing that. And like 
what, in the six months that we were doing that, like he was like a different person. And now yeah. look what he's doing. I you worked know? with him part of it. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. So I said, well, you know what? I have 16 years in a business. I, I basically helped Norm Connors a lot, you know, a lot of times, helped Chuck. I've helped Plumber. I still, and that's the other thing. I still work for IWC. I just work behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. So, but now I want to do something that's gives back to the guys that don't get the reps like they should. My philosophy on Prospect Pro is you're a young guy, come work for us. Like, you don't have to be the greatest, but we're going to put you with guys that have the experience that could lead you to be great or better than what you are. You know, some places, guys come out of school. Okay, well, you're going to go wrestle with another trainee. Well, that's great, but to me, that that's nothing. You need to work with guys that have been doing it for a long time. And that's mm -hmm. what we're doing. Like, we're going to have a couple storylines. Um, right now, there's there's no titles. There's no nothing like that. It's just guys coming out there trying to put on a good show in front of people. We made the tickets affordable for people. Like, you're not going to see all the big indie names. You know, once in a while, we'll bring some guys in. But it's... For the local guys and we want people to come out and see these local guys give these local guys a chance um you know honestly when i came up like we didn't have a lot of opportunities thank mm -hmm. god that norm like we had constant bookings you know on iwc shows and that's one thing that some guys in the area they kind of fail to remember is if you're what for every reason if you're on the booking committee or you're doing this or that for the promoter and you're getting booked every month great good for you but how about the guy that doesn't get those opportunities and maybe gets to wrestle once every three months? Not because he's a bad guy. Mm. Just there's no room or you're trying to put yourself in that position. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... And maybe guys that aren't ready to travel yet, right? Yes and no. Okay. You know, it's... I mean, I, I know a couple of examples in my head. I'm not going to name names, but there's a couple of examples. The guys that should be wrestling more, mm -hmm. like they're they're good, but for there's too many people on a car, or there's too many egos pushing themselves, or you know whatnot, or they're not being used the way they should, or they're wrestling just wrestling other trainees that have the same amount of time. No, they should be. You want to th those? That's your future. Like th it doesn't matter. Like. I only had so many years. Bronco has only so many years. You know, a lot of the guys don't have so many years, so many bumps, as we call it. You need to be cultivating and molding these new guys to get to that level that, you know, when it's time for you to go, somebody's there to kind of continue it, right? And there's enough wrestling companies in the area now. That's the, <clears throat> that's the crazy part. Like, regardless of what people th like, oh, this, this place is bad, or this place, everybody like, has this place to wrestle. Get out, yeah. you know? We just, I just want to do it a little bit differently. And, and and there's good talent at all. Of them. Yes, like I, I can say that across the board, there is good content. Definitely good talent at about every wrestling company here in the area. Yes, everybody like, you know, I'm not a fan of some of them, mm -hmm. but that's just me, right? That's my personal opinion. But that's not. There's a lot of different philosophies going out yes. there too. But that's not a reflection of like the wrestlers. No, that's the like that's my like that's my thought on the company itself and how it's being run, not the workers themselves. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of guys like. Lee Morad, Moriarty. Yeah, Moriarty. I'm sorry. Just, Lee. just here the other night. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, I'm a fan of his. Like, you know, like a lot of these guys that come out. I, I, I do watch Rise. Like, I see mm -hmm. the guys that are going out there. Um, like I said, I, mine's like, like Derek. You know, he has the open door policy. I have an open door policy too. Like, we're just starting out, but it's not like this is a one and done deal. Mm -hmm. Like, I plan on being around for a while, and if anybody wants to come and work for us. Great. You know, I want I want different guys. I want to see matchups. Like my thing is like our first our main event, Roden versus McChesney. Like to me, like that's great. Like I I want to sit and just watch it. Like it's never been done. Nobody's done it. Mm -hmm. Like let's see some matchups that hasn't been done, you know? And and if it comes down to a point where oh, I work for here and oh, well he don't let me work over here. Bullshit. You we're all wrestlers, right? It shouldn't come down to that. Like if you're, like if one guy's running here and one guy's running up here, who cares? Mm -hmm. 
And, and you're you're working up in Cantanning. It's yes. a it's a good way the other direction. It's not like this weird pocket that's happened in the south of Pittsburgh yes. where everybody is literally literally ten minutes down the road running against each other. Which you know you can argue whether that does or doesn't. Uh, I mean, every, two two companies have the biggest houses of the year running a show down ten literally ten minutes down what the road. What I did from notice though from that is. Mm-hmm. And I'll put Justin Plummer on blast for this. It's one thing he always told me when I went to when I worked at RWA is like, why would you do that? Because you know the fans, we don't, you know, it's the same fans. No, it's not. It's totally different. You might have one, two, three, four fans cross over. You might, mm-hmm. but you know what? For the majority, IDBC has their fan base. Uh, RWA has their fan here's, base. Here's 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 RWA fans. Don't like IWC. No, no, like that's... they have. I have been told that Super Indie is boring by RWA fans. Yes, like it's a different philosophy. It's a different type of thing. Yeah, and you guys are able to poke at those fans in different ways than you do an IWC fan, right? Well, and the best part about it is like, and, and I, I, we did this years ago when we were when we were traveling to Ohio, but it, it worked perfectly here. I can go to RWA and be a total asshole, mm-hmm. and I'll get the reaction I want. It's it's more of a southern feel old school yeah iwc yeah. i love iwc it's my home but they're a bunch of smart marks mm-hmm. and it's like if you're not out there flipping you know and, and doing all the flashy stuff they don't care like i could go out to rwa and just basically say hey piss off and i'll get tremendous heat you go to iwc you can't do that mm-hmm. you uh, piss off oh i need a 450 i need that you know or or you need to kill yourself which Yes, and it's, no. it's a different philosophy. It's it's a whole different yeah. philosophy, you, you know. And, and but but that's what's nice. One thing, and I will tell anybody: if they, if nobody's checked out Revenge Pro up in Erie, mm-hmm. you need to, because what they're doing up there is something unique and it's awesome. Like, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Not that I'm wrestling on their shows, but I do help behind the scenes with them, and it it's great. I I think I've done four shows for them now. It's just, it's a different product. It's a fresh feel. Mm-hmm. If you, I recommend anybody, just go check them out. It's with McCh- John McChesney and Aaron Draven and Jamie and them are doing up there something just totally unique. Good. It, 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 optics, at least, like seeing what they're doing, any of the videos I see, pictures or anything, it, like it does look like you need to get them it's on got your a network. little more <laughs> We'll have a discussion about that somewhere down the line. <laughs> But uh, no, it's good. It seems like everything's fresh. Everything's hot right now, and yeah. and there's a lot of opportunity there. You get in a new area, and uh, and it looks like uh, you know some really fun matches. I'm loving the matchups that are coming up here. You know, one thing is is I am firmly secure with the matches that we have for on December fifteenth. Every match is providing something different. But one thing at the end of the day, the buck stops with me. I don't have a bunch of guys sitting around putting matches together. Mm-hmm. It's all coming from me. So if it if it comes off shitty, come tell me about it. It's on me. I take the blame for it. Like I said, we're trying something new. I, I think I think everybody's going to be happy with what we're doing. And, and you know, like I said, we got we got some vets. We got some guys right out of the, the training school from IWC. Um, got some guys that you know been around a couple years. A little bit of everything. So, it should be a good time. I see a lot here. Eh? Like I'm looking at the card right now. We have like Super Hentai, big vet, somebody that you've done a lot of battles with with Bulk Nasty. Teacher versus student. Mm-hmm. There'll probably be a lot of that teacher versus student action. I mean, I mean, a lot of these guys have been trainees, uh, trainers, back in the day too. When's Bronco going to get a shot against DJ Z? Let's just say, <laughs> let's just say I've had a conversation with DJ Z mm-hmm. in the last couple of weeks. Another one, nice. Uh, a little over here. Gambino for president. I love, I love Marshall. He doesn't sugarcoat it. I think <laughs> it's my favorite. And if you don't like it, tough shit. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's just the that's way tiny. it is. Uh, but good to see a lot of guys that are making waves in here. I see the Rev is a part of this as yes. well. And somebody that you've worked with in RWA yes, I, I, before I'm as well. very excited to have the, the Rev on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, uh, I love Rev. Like Sometimes... He could be a little bit much for me, but I, I think he's going to fit perfectly in what we're doing up there. That's great. Yeah, I like that. He's good. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And, and he's I'm a promotional like, machine. Yes. 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 He's always on it. Uh, I'm excited that uh, I see that Chuck Roberts is uh, dying the tux one more time. One night only. One night only. Chuck Roberts comes out of the woodwork. Yes. Uh, 
I was, uh, I'll be honest with you. When I, when I made that phone call, I was like, there's no chance in hell. <laughs> and, uh, I'm excited for that. I mean, that's, you know, have a good night, everybody. <laughs> I was excited when he did somebody's wedding in recent years. So, <laughs> Oh yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That we were both, I think working. There was, there was two weddings he's done for that for Who's me. the other? Uh, hentai and, uh, and flexor. Oh, that, he was at Flex Wars. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That was that. Oh, that was the day where it was like an entire table of former and current IWC owners. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and like it and was jo- like a summit. <laughs> and then Joe Dabrowski and uh, I don't know one of the S- oh uh, I think it was like Wild Chowder or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you have all the owners, and then there was just like these you're just two. like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And fun. then I was at the tag team table with you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that always seems to happen. Um, awesome. Well, 2PW, it is coming up on uh, December 15th, the first show up in Catanning, PA. Uh, not not far. If you guys are in the Pittsburgh area, definitely. Listen, guys, you're, you're already traveling for IWC Rise and everything in the South. Hey, you know there's a north of the city, and now there's wrestling there, and you can go check it out there, too. So It's, a, it's about 40, 45 minutes from the city. It's not bad. I mean, yeah. that's, that's pretty much from town coming to the IWC. It's about halfway towards me. Yeah. Closer. Oh. We go get a Broncos for the after party. We got a short commute for Bronco <laughs> finally. Well, the, uh, oh, yeah. Thank God. Well, no, but the uh, the club might be open back oh, up geez. by now. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. The strip club I used to show. work at burned down like a year and a half ago. Wait, remember. burnt down? Yeah. I, what did you do? Fire. I didn't do it. Yeah, you're not the only person that asked that. I, well, my exit wasn't the best. <laughs> uh, I I chugged a bottle of Captain Morgan and said, fuck you, I quit. And then, like, it was just a rough time, but, like, fences were mended, but they're they're in the process of rebuilding. They should be up. They were they were wanting to be up this week. But Maybe we should, should do up. a wrestling show there down the road. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Brand new building. Yeah. <laughs> we have some kind of on a pole match or something. Nobody else that. is doing that in this area. No. So, I mean, Different, right? Yeah, the corner of the I market. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna see. We're gonna see what happens, man. Like, it, like yeah. I'm excited for it. Um, you know, everybody that's involved, excited for it. You know, mm-hmm. it, uh, social media is running wild on it. Just, we're getting a lot of feedback from people. Um, just gonna be a fun night of wrestling. That's awesome. You know, so where can people find out more information about the promotion? Uh, prospectprowrestling.com or uh, facebook.com prospectprowrestling. There you go. We don't, uh-huh. we don't do the Twitter and all that yet. We're, not yet. We're not that sophisticated. You gotta work your you gotta work your way up to it, especially yes. as a new promotion. We don't have the Sorgatron Media I'm behind s- it. I'm still working up to Twitter. We're, wait, we're trying to get that Sorgatron Media machine behind it, but it's you know, we will have a discussion. It's slowly it. pulling out of the station. We'll, we'll have a discussion as soon as producer Missy gets back from oh, Sorgatron shit. Media West. We're, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to sign I'm trying to sign some Northern California promotions. That's it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, thank you Marshall Gambino it's been a pleasure watching these god 12 plus years of watching local indie wrestling for me That's you've been right. there since day one uh, wow well, uh, not day one but I've been there a long time well day one of me watching I think. you look, look like that's what I'm one. saying <laughs> dude I I still dude, remember I still remember we used to do this show in a, in a it was on the second floor one time yep. it was in a basement a couple times yep like You're, one of you was wearing a monkey head. I should have like VIP status by now. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, pretty know. much. We'll buy a taco. I mean, the only thing you need is like you need to get like valet out here parking. Parking it's is an a issue. Bitch up here. It's right an there. issue. Well, I thought that, he, he didn't tell me the guys across the street were taco vendors. I thought they were going to rob me or something when I pulled <laughs> in. <laughs> well, you got to give that Iggy when you're like. I know. I drew on the one. He was like, "Oh, tacos." My bad, man. That's why the cops are going down by. Thank you so much. Go check it out. And you can check out a lot of the history of Marshall Gambino over at IndieWrestling.us. A lot of action and violence and fun stuff there. Uh, and the rest of the Gambino family, too, including Vicky. Who's hey, you never know who might show up at this show. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I mean, Jimmy DeMarco is advertised on the card. Mm-hmm. But there, might be, <clears throat> there might be a couple other uh, family members coming out of the woodwork. You never know who might show up awesome go check it out and uh thank you everybody for checking out the indie mayhem show again check out everything at india wrestling.us past interviews and other podcasts at wrestling mayhem show.com and until next time support indie wrestling oh. 
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.